Hello, I'm Denshi, and recently I made a video about what I use in GNU slash Linux, and I, I talked about my desktop environment, my distro of choice, and all that stuff. And I didn't really feel like I went into enough detail about why I use KDE, the K desktop environment, the cool desktop environment, if you want to call it that. And it really boils down to three main things. One, it's the least bloated and at the same time most customizable desktop environment. Number two, it just is super customizable. As I said in my video, you can right click on anything and it will have options. And number three, it has a crazy large ecosystem, like literally every program you can think of that exists for some purpose. Like if there's a, like a GNOME equivalent, there's probably a KDE equivalent. So let's get into the first thing, which is it's not that bloated. Now, obviously, something like a desktop environment, regardless of what it is, it's still going to be more bloated than pretty much any window manager out there. In fact, if I remember well, the one I took a look at in Instant OS, it was an instant window manager. And recently enough, actually that's a recently, DistoTube, which is a famous uh, YouTube channel, took a look at Instant OS. So that's actually just a side tangent. That's actually really, really good. I thought Instant OS was just like this tiny, stupid Reddit post thing that someone was doing, but it's getting real serious recognition. That's great. I still don't understand why it's Manjaro, but Instant OS, just sitting there idle, used around 130, 140 megabytes of RAM. So really low RAM usage and really low processor use, just really, really great performance. It has a good window manager that apparently the author wrote uh, by themselves. It's called Instant OS. So that's Instant, Instant Window Manager for Instant OS. And it's great. And apparently they're working on uh, getting um, Instant Window Manager just kind of like releasable as a separate thing that you can install like with Arch or something. So that's always excellent. Uh, but back to my actual point, Instant OS, something like Instance Window Manager or i3 or whatever, DWM, all of that is obviously gonna use less resources. So like open up KSysGuard or something, you'll notice, well, what we're sitting here, we're using 1.1 gigabytes of RAM. That's simply because, um, well, the swap is full, is full and the swap just was full because before I was like playing some video games, I was playing some Kerbal Space Program with this little cool icon over there. And that took up a bunch of swap because it just it just chomps through your memory. It's like with all, all your memory just eats all of it. Just terrible, terrible bloated game. But you know it runs good, kind of. And uh, 1.1 gigabytes. Just ignore 0.2 of that. Um, so around 0 0.9, 0 0.8 gigabytes. Well, Gibby bytes in this case because it's GIB. Gibby bytes of uh, RAM usage normally with Manjaro and KDE. Manjaro is kind of bloated, I'll be honest. It's not as good as uh, Arch. When I was using Arch with KDE, it was around 500 to 600 megabytes of RAM usage, which is still crazy low. Like literally every single modern system that there is out there can run pretty much any desktop environment with no issue. But I mean, we're getting to the point where we're getting like computers out there that are meant to like web browse and watch videos and they've got like eight gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But um something like uh, Desk KDE is still going to be less bloated than something like GNOME or Unity. And that's just because GTK, which is the underlying API for the actual, you know, programs that make sure all your themes and stuff are consistent. You know, my file manager looks like this. This even old programs like K3B, which I'll talk about uh, later, which is actually a part of my uh, third point, uh, looks similar because they're all written in Qt and Qt is good at theming and stuff. And the themes are all consistent and stuff. That API is just so much lighter uh, the KDE, well, the, the QT API, just so much lighter than something like GTK, mostly because it was developed by, you know, a big company and such, and it was all, like, professionally made and such, but it's still free software, so that's always great. Anyway, so, you know, uh, KDE, not that resource-sucking. Resource it's very, very light compared to other things. It's ab about as light as XFCE, which is you know, that's kind of shocking to me. KDE used to be a little bit more bloated than that, but it's on the same level as XFCE, which is excellent. Uh, maybe on slightly lower end systems, you might see the difference between XFC and KDE, but like it's it's the same basically. On any relatively modern system, at least in like the last five years, it's gonna be the same with KDE and XFC, which makes it great. So GTK and GNOME is really where the bloat is at. So another thing about it being bloated, if I want it, let's say in GNOME, what you do is you have like, uh, like you have like, a, so I'll just illustrate, I'll talk about this whole panel thing later, but you have like what you do, is, um, well, you first use GNOME. I don't know why it's just showing my configuration file for my icons. So what you do is you have like this thing, you have like this kind of dash thing in GNOME where like, um, well, normally it would constantly be there. I don't think there's an option to hide it. I think there might be, but I'm not sure. So you have like this thing in GNOME where you click this and it like opens up an application menu like Max or something and you have the icons over here. And if you want to go there in GNOME and you want to turn this, so you want to turn this entire operation and you would take it and you want to turn it into 
a dock, so like this, so like this Mac style kind of dock, um, you have to install a plugin to do that. That's the level of bloat that there is in GNOME. You have to install a plugin and use an external, if it's not already pre-installed, a GNOME plugins application to actually run, to r install that plugin. It's, it's ridiculous. Why? And uh, the only reason it is like that is simply because, you know, GNOME is built to be far more, you know, this is what you've been using for a while, this is rigid, and you're not really meant to customize it, but at the same time you are. Well, KDE is all about customization. So that brings me to a second point. So GNOME is bloated, it's hard to customize, and KDE, as I said, I need to reiterate this point so much. You can right-click on literally anything and customize it to, to be like anything. Now, it's not specific theming. Obviously, that's all customizable. There's so many themes out there. You can make your own theme quite easily. And when it comes to something like, I don't know, the panel really is what's most powerful. So in KDE, by default, you'll have like this white looking windows bar. Now that's not a taskbar, that's a panel. And a panel is like an object. What it is, so this is a panel as well. If I wanted to, I could sit here and stretch this out and like make it really long and make it look like the windows one, but that's not what I'm doing. This is a panel, this is what you normally get. And a panel is just a grouping, you know, thing, a grouping container for widgets. So something like this icons only task manager, that's a widget. And because of this, the fact that you can literally sit there and dissect the the panel or whatever you this is a panel, but it's you might call it in this case a dock. So you can dissect the dock and take things out and such. That just makes it super customizable. And I love the fact that the theming is really easy as well. So obviously you have Kevantum or something, Kevantum Manager, that, that's also in XFC, and I'm pretty sure GNOME too, but I'm not sure. Uh, you can just install like themes and stuff. That's easy. But when it comes to the stock KDE theme, there's an there's an internal uh, program that lets you not only just you know have themes, not only just uh, manage them, but you can get new ones from the program itself. They have a KDE database of themes, and you can sit here and scroll through all of these and use all the themes. So that's just it's just amazing. I really like it. And there's there's a Windows theme. Great. Anyway, so I really enjoy the fact that KDE is also tightly integrated to things, but I'll get to that ecosystem later. But KDE is super crazy customizable. The widgets, obviously, to mention, you can sit here and add literally any kind of widget you can imagine. There's probably a KDE widget for it. Look at that, media player, network monitor, networks. You can sit here and, I don't know, pan on. That's like an audio wave. If you move this here, there you go. Uh, my voice as an audio wave. Look at that. I installed this as a plugin, actually. This is pretty much, this is only the, the, the only real plugin I have in KDE. And it's this little pan on uh, thing. So look at that. I guess I'll just, uh, well, this is kind of intensive to look at actually. I'll, re I'll remove this. Uh, it's in, in fact, it uses a little bit of memory, that pan on. So I wouldn't recommend installing plugins like that into KDE because they use like 100 megas, 100 megs of memory or something stupid like that. Or a lot of processors. Look, my fans are heating up because of pan on. Well, they're heating up because of OBS, but that's different. Anyway, so customizable. You can make KDE look like anything. Mac, Windows, your own crazy concept for what a desktop should look like, literally anything. So then there's another factor to take a look at, and it's the KDE ecosystem, just the amazing ecosystem there is. So you can sit here and install pretty much any program out there for any purpose when it comes to things like, I don't know, like a couple of days ago, I was sitting there and I needed a program to burn DVDs and CDs because I still use DVDs and CDs. So I was looking up on the internet and I found out about K3B. And it turns out there's a KDE, just a already ready-made K3B disk burner and I thought I would have to use some like GNOME GTK garbage but no just straight in there you know there's already perfectly made for me there's already pre-made there's a perfectly you know functional and very featureful K3B disk burner this thing over here and obviously with the theming it all looks consistent and such and it just it just looks great even in the modern day despite the fact this was this UI was probably designed like a good uh, five years ago or something and barely tweaked um, it still looks amazing because it's just very themable. So that's back to customization. But the ecosystem is great. So something like, I don't know, KID. There's KID. KID is a program for managing like your audio and such. That's excellent. It's an I don't know why, my, why all my things are flagging, but uh, they're all becoming red. But look at, look at this. Just I can customize everything to just whatever I want when it comes to the themes. And because of the huge array of QT, so that's the API, as, as I talked before, the QT API and just the amazing KDE programs itself, so just the amount of programs there are out there created by the KDE company, the KDE foundation, whatever it is, you know, the KDE company, you know, them. Uh, there's just so many. And because there's so many, and they're all intercompatible, they just, they just kind of work, and it's just this huge ecosystem, and I just love this. I'm really stupidly strict about this, where I have to, everything must be KDE, you know, must look consistent, like, I don't really care that much, but it just is this extra attention to detail when it comes to having all these programs 
looks so similar. And I, I just really, really like it. So, yeah, I mean, that's my third point uh, summarized. I like the fact that KDE has this huge ecosystem to it. There's just so many things to it. There's even KDE Plasma Mobile, so that's great. Um, so, yeah, in conclusion, number one, KDE is not that bloated. Uh, it uses few system resources, and it doesn't need many plugins to do what you want. It doesn't need any plugins, actually, to customize. Number two, it's very customizable. You can customize it to pretty much look like anything or to look like whatever you want. There's so many themes available. The theme, like, installer browser thing to download new themes is built straight into the program. It is a program. It's a desktop environment. And number three, the ecosystem is huge. There's so many KDE apps. There's so many QT apps, and they all look great and consistent. So thanks for watching my video. This is why I use KDE. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I guess, um, you know, Echo... Good bye. If I can spell it right. There you go. Goodbye. So, yeah. Goodbye.